1989, NATO published their requirements for a new firearm. It was to be a high-capacity weapon that had the capability to defeat Kevlar body armor. At the time, some machine guns chambered in pistol calibers such as the MP5 were the gold standard in close quarter firearms. Pistol caliber submachine guns are proven weapons, but lack the ability to consistently defeat body armor. In response, HNG created the MP7, classified as a personal defense weapon rather than a submachine gun. It fires the proprietary 46 by 30 round, with a bullet intended to pierce through body armor. The gun is also very small and light, perfect for those who find themselves in CQB environments. And unlike the MP5, the MP7 has rails out of the box to accept lights, lasers, and optics. So what is the 46 by 30 round? How effective are MP7s compared to short-barreled rifles? And how good are they? in ready or not. In and early 90s, close quarter weapons were typically some kind of submachine gun chambered in a pistol caliber. While effective against unarmored targets, pistol calibers cannot effectively penetrate many types of body armor. And around this time period, body armor was becoming cheaper and more commonplace. NATO recognized a need for a small weapon capable of penetrating body armor. Two companies created weapons in response. FN with their bullpup B90, and h &K with their MP7. It is interesting to note that both companies took a similar approach to designing a weapon to fit NATO's criteria. In h &K's case, they first designed a new cartridge. What this ended up being was the 46 by 30 mm round. It is a round that is small and light, yet capable of penetrating body armor. Variations of the ammo include armor piercing, law enforcement hollow point, and full metal jacket. HK was ready to push a variety of types for the 4.6 for it to become a successor to the 9mm round. The MP7 itself came afterwards. It is a personal defense weapon that fires using a short stroke gas system. This system is very similar to its larger rifle counterparts, such as the HK416. This is a very reliable design that will keep running in adverse conditions. The short stroke gas piston, coupled with the small 46 by 30 mm round, means that the MP7 has incredibly low recoil, especially compared to pistol calibers. This makes it very easy for a user to fire a burst at a target. Shot placement is important, but in close quarters, a high volume of fire means that the user will more likely hit a target. Due to the smaller size of 46 by 30 magazines for the MP7 can hold up to 40 rounds. This is higher capacity than most other submachine guns and rifles, which typically hold 30 rounds. Because of these advantages, many law enforcement and military units have chosen this weapon around the world, such as the famous Naval Special Warfare Development Group. A compact weapon with 40 round capacity magazines that can penetrate body armor is an incredibly useful tool in the right circumstance. However, the MP7 has a few significant downsides, especially in a law enforcement environment. The first has to do with the 46 by 30 round. The round is incredibly effective versus body armor, but reportedly lacks in wounding capability. Compared to pistol calibers such as 9mm and 45 ACP, the 46 by 30 is not as effective against an unarmored target. Law enforcement, especially general duty cops, are more likely to deal with suspects without body armor. In these scenarios, a pistol caliber would likely be more effective. Shooting a burst of full auto into a target is quite easy to do with the MP7, 
but it is also somewhat of a necessity. And you talk to anybody who's used it overseas and they don't, they never shoot a guy once with this. They, their attitude, he gets a half a magazine or more. And while shooting the MP7 on full auto isn't difficult, it still isn't as accurate as shooting semi-automatic. Law enforcement typically operate in areas with civilians, so shooting accurately is extremely important. Additionally, body armor has advanced significantly since 2001. When it was introduced, the MP7 was capable of penetrating soft body armor. While still an important trait, there are many advanced types of body armors available now than there were 20 years ago. Many types of body armors these days will be able to successfully protect against a 46 by 30 round. This leaves the MP7 somewhat insufficient against armored targets. The MP7 has a very specific niche. A small gun capable for penetrating body armor is not the most versatile gun, and not a gun the average cop will have in their patrol vehicle. But in a situation where such a firearm is required, the MP7 is among the best choices. Nevertheless, the MP7 is used by several different law enforcement agencies around the world. And with the number of armored suspects and ready or not, it certainly has a place in the game. So give the MP7 a try. You won't be disappointed. This isn't something I normally do, but as you may have noticed, we are very close to 1,000 subscribers. None of the content on this channel would be possible without your support, and I wanted to say thank you to each and every one of you. If you haven't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you did. It really does help me out.